Good morning, dearest brothers and sisters. I pray you're all having a beautiful, wonderful morning. I just wanted to come on and talk to you for a little bit. Something's been put on my spirit in the last couple days. And I've talked about it before, and you've all heard it before. So this will be just a beautiful little reminder. I just want to pray that the Holy Spirit fills me with His voice, not my voice. His thoughts, not my thoughts. I pray that He guides every word that comes out of me Dear brothers and sisters, we're coming to a time where it is imperative that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ to the point where you can sit with him and speak to him in your spirit and that you hear him back and then you can speak back to him and respond and so on and so forth. Now, we all have different gifts, dear brothers and sisters, tongues, discernment. And a lot of people think that they all stopped in the good book, that those were just gifts that were given to the apostles. Now, let's think about that for a second, you guys. Our beautiful father that we know all-loving, all-powerful. Do you think that he would just give gifts so that it would uh, fill up some pages in, in a book and, and then be done at the end of that book? And that the people that were reading wouldn't be able to develop a relationship with him in order for him to give them those same gifts that he's been given since the very beginning. Even saying it, it sounds silly to me. Now, discernment is a gift, dear brothers and sisters. It is a gift that needs to be exercised daily. You've been using it your whole entire life. It's been labeled as various different things, uh, such as instinct or that gut feeling. Now, that's our enemy, uh, putting labels and boxes on things. And we'll continue to do so, so that you feel insignificant. And that things are done by chance. But anybody that's watching this knows better. Anybody that's new, welcome. I love you guys. It's not by chance that you... you came here or stumbled upon this at all or anything that you do at any moment of any day. John 10, 27, 28, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them from out of my hand. Now, what does it mean to know someone's voice, dear brothers and sisters? And let's think, let's always go back, use the reference of a child. We're supposed to be childlike. In order for us to enter into the kingdom, we need to be as a child, dear brothers and sisters. And what does that mean? Innocent, completely wholeheartedly trusting in that voice that, that guides us and teaches us oblivious to the world and the things that are happening around it. Think, think of a child, dear brothers and sisters, right now. What do they know about the world? <clears throat> Other than that straight and narrow guidance that they were given, that they've been given, that they are given. What that parent teaches them, or anybody that's within their circle, that's all that child knows. And for us to find the kingdom of heaven, we need to be childlike. 
We need to have that straight, narrow vision, dear brothers and sisters. We need to be able to develop a, a, a relationship with that voice, that beautiful, loving voice that is teaching us all the necessary, essential things that we need so that we can be the child that that voice wants us to be. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we, we need to practice speaking. It's extremely important that you go inside your prayer closet. You want to go inside your prayer closet. Close your eyes, dear brothers and sisters. Now, yes, I do agree. You should put yourself in a place where there's no distraction. A place where you can focus. Dedicate all your time and concentration to listening to that voice. But there is no step-by-step -step way of doing it, dear brothers and sisters. It's the same as any conversation that you've ever had with anybody else that you care for. We got to go into it with faith and knowing that it's happening. That's the most important thing. There's these vain, repetitive prayers. I'll use the, the rosary, for instance, where it's just, it's robotic. I can still picture my grandmother, my beautiful Ukrainian grandmother, going through a rosary and just, it just, uh, me looking at her, and it almost looked like she was in a trance. It wasn't, uh, <sighs> needs to be a relationship, dear brothers and sisters. It, it can't be a chore. That is a work, dear brothers and sisters. When we feel that we have to do these things to buy our way into heaven, such as do the rosary every single day, I can still picture my mother walking around, getting things ready in the morning before my dad got up, you know, whether it was opening the blinds and cleaning while she's doing the rosary. Now, I'm not saying you can't pray while you do things throughout the day. You should be praying through, you know, everything that you do, dear brothers and sisters, we have to do it with heart. We have to do it with everything that is inside of us. We have to do it knowing that we are speaking to our Father and that it's not just an open, vain prayer out into nothing. So I encourage you today. I don't know what your relationship is, what it's like with our Father. I don't know what kind of communication you have with Him. What I do know is that for the things that are coming going forward here, we, we are going to need it, dear brothers and sisters. I see that uh, my country here, Canada, there are certain places where they're entering into the third wave. And people are just baffled. They just, they don't even know what to do with themselves. They're so in shock and awe that this is happening, that it's going to a third and, and, for anyone that has eyes to see, dear brothers and sisters, this is not going away anytime soon. How do you get a people to conform? You tear them up. Tear, sorry, you tear them down, you build them up. You tear them down, you build them up. You tear them down, you build them up. And then eventually over time, after so many times of tearing down and building back up, eventually you start molding that clay into what you want it to be. Now, the reason why they hate us, dear brothers and sisters, is, is we're, we have the master potter molding our clay. We cannot be conformed and molded by the world. And therefore, these tearing down and building back up, that is the purpose of why it's happening, your brothers and sisters, is so that it, they can eventually squeeze people back into wanting to have their lives back just so they can have things to go back to normal. What does that even mean, you guys? What does that mean to go back to normal? What is normal? Is the world normal? Sure. 
to a lot of people it is. It is definitely, it's definitely uh, normal to them because that's all they've ever known. But these things that are happening all around us, dear brothers and sisters, it's, that's, our enemy's got them already. It's not, he's not coming for them. So for us to be able to survive the things that are coming, you better be able to have a, a conversation, a, a, a relationship with Christ Jesus so that you speak to him, he speaks back to you. Throughout the day, you get these little examples that happen to you where he shows you that he's there. If you think about it, when you love somebody, dear brothers and sisters, and you leave them a little, like a little note, a little love note saying, I love you, have a great day. Little, little thoughtful things like that. Not because you have to, but because you love them. And there's a wide, I can give you a wide variety of, of reasons, a list of things that when people love each other, that, that's what they do. But you will see those things throughout the day from our Father, from our Savior. You have to have the eyes to see them, though, dear brothers and sisters. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is, is through practice. Speak to Him. Don't just throw up a prayer. Speak to Him. Ask for Him to show you. How to speak to him. Read in the good book how to speak to him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Think about what that means, dear brothers and sisters. You've got such a strong relationship. You can hear our Savior loud and clear. He speaks to you loud and clear. So that when a man comes to try to pluck you out of his hand, he'll guide you. You'll know his voice and he'll know yours. But we need to do, we need to practice all day, every day, dear brothers and sisters. I'm going to share something with you that I haven't shared with too many people. And I had, I had mentioned it before and, but when I was young, I, I remember hearing, I remember hearing God when I, and I mean like six, seven, eight years old. And I remember distinctly picking out the differences in how he was talking to me and knowing that it wasn't me and what I was hearing. And I had this feeling of knowing that I couldn't share that with a whole lot of people at the time because of how it was, it would be looked upon and, and how the world was creating itself so that anybody that spoke to God was frowned upon and looked at as somebody that had sickness or mental illness. And I knew this at a very young age because he told me. And I remember him telling me it was God and that he loved me. And that one day I would be taught and told what that voice was and how they would try to convince me that that voice was anything other than what it was. And that was the voice of God, dear brothers and sisters. And sure enough, I got to high school, we started studying the brain, and then you're starting and taught a little bit of psychology, but where your thoughts come from, how there's an ego, a super ego, and an id, and those are all responsible, you know, responsible for various different thoughts, and and it hit me again. I couldn't, I, I was just beside myself, dear brothers and sisters. I remembered the conversation. And it's, to this very day, blown me away at how amazing 
this whole journey has been, how much we are loved, coming on here today, dear brothers and sisters, I know you all have a relationship. I know you do. I feel it from you. I feel it from every single one of you in your comments, whether you have your own channel, the things that you preach, I can feel it. But I'm going to encourage all of you to continue to practice to where you can have a conversation just like you're having right now with our Savior and believe it without letting the world creep in and tell you any different, without the thoughts and in the indoctrination that we've all been put in to know that you shouldn't be able to hear a voice, you shouldn't be able to talk to yourself, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do the Yeah. I'm good, thank you, world. Think about all the brothers before us, dear brothers and sisters. That could speak to God in their spirit. There's a many example, dear brothers and sisters. And to think that that just doesn't happen anymore. What are we doing here? That is the end goal, dear brothers and sisters. So I'm going to leave this at this today. I pray you all got one, one thing out of this. One of you got something from it. It was just, it's been burning on me for the last couple of days to just to talk to, to you about talking to him. Just, just do it. Just put yourself out there in faith, knowing that you are going to get a response and that you're going to trust that voice, you're going to respond to that voice, and then that conversation just is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger to where you can hear him and he can hear you all day long. And when it comes time for him to tell you what you need to do, or whatever the case may be, it'll be just like the voice you're hearing right now, dear brothers and sisters. So I pray you all have an amazing day. I love you very much. God bless each and every one of you. Enjoy this weekend, you guys. Enjoy today. Take some time and reflect on, on what it truly means. Father willing, uh, when the time is right, I'll definitely do another one. I love you. Take care.